In today's video, I'll refinish and repair an old electric bass guitar. This one, right here. This is a 1960s Vox Cougar electric bass. It's in pretty bad shape. It looks like somebody painted it black at some point in its life. And it's not a very good paint job. You can see a lot of texture in the paint which I'm assuming is where the paint sunk down into the grain of the wood. It's got a couple of holes in the side. I think this bigger one is probably where the output jack used to be. And over time it probably just weakened that area and it eventually turned into this big hole. And then the smaller hole next to it is where somebody relocated the jack too. First thing I did was to remove anything that was removable. The pickup came out pretty easily. The pickup that's supposed to be in the front didn't come with the guitar, so I'll have to figure out a replacement for that. Two of the knobs came off easily, but a couple of them did not want to come off. For this one, I was able to just heat it up a little bit with a soldering iron. I did remove this little rubber ring first, so I didn't melt it. But the other knob was really stubborn and did not want to come off even with some heat. And I even sprayed some penetrating oil in there and it just wouldn't come off. So I got this tool and I was going to just cut off the shaft of the potentiometer that the knob is attached to. But once I started cutting, I noticed that the knob was coming loose and it must have just been the vibrations from the blade because I was able to get the knob off then without actually cutting through the shaft. So I may be able to save that potentiometer if it's still good. The neck was easy to remove just by removing these screws. My plan was to scrape off the finish and here you can see how I was able to just lift off that clear coat, leaving just the black paint underneath. But doing the whole guitar like this would have taken forever, so I just got a scraper and scraped away. There is plastic binding around the whole edge of the body and I wanted to be extra careful on that 
It's actually not hard to scrape paint off of it, but I wanted to make sure to only scrape off as much as I had to to get the paint off so that I didn't make the binding too thin. And then I went over the whole thing gently with some 180 grit sandpaper. And next I worked on repairing the two holes. First thing I did was fill in that smaller hole that had the jack in it. And to do this I used some epoxy putty. And I was able to get my finger in there through the bigger hole just far enough to provide some backing for the epoxy so I could kind of get it to mushroom over the hole on the inside to give it something to grip onto once it dried. I gave the epoxy a little bit of time to start setting up but not completely harden. So when it's just partially hardened, it's easier to trim. So I started by just shaving off excess with a utility knife blade. And when it was completely hardened, then I could go back with some sandpaper and finish smoothing it up. Next, it was time to work on the bigger hole. And this one was going to be a little trickier. I wanted to close this up with some layers of veneer. But first I needed something behind the surface that I'd be able to glue the veneer to. So to do this, I made some kerf lining. And the kerf lining is that part that you can see in this shot inside the guitar, and it looks like a slotted piece of wood. And I made my own just using a strip of poplar, I think it was. And on the table saw, I just cut some saw kerfs in it so that it was flexible and I could bend it into the shape of the side of the guitar. And then I used some super glue to glue it to the existing kerf lining in the guitar. This was also a little tricky, but thankfully there was enough room for me to get my fingers in there and get it lined up and hold it for the glue to dry. The other side was a little harder to do because I wouldn't have room to get my fingers in there anymore. So instead, I put a little screw in the top to give me something to grab onto. And then I also used this paint can opener that kind of has a little hook on the end to grab the bottom of the lining and pull it up and against the side of the guitar as the glue dried. And then once those two were in, then I had a backing that I could start gluing the veneer to. These would also help to strengthen this area because this is where the input jack for the guitar was going to go. Next, I trimmed around the hole a little bit 
just so it wasn't so irregular because I was going to need to make a veneer patch for this. So I just cleaned it up. And then I took a piece of paper and traced around the hole. And I guess I'm not very good at tracing because this took me a few times to get right. And then I cut out that shape and used that to cut out a new piece of veneer to start patching the hole with. And again, I used super glue here because it would have been really tough to get a clamp on here and hold it while wood glue dried. So the super glue would dry pretty quickly and I would not need to clamp it. This was going to take about three or four layers of veneer built up to equal the thickness of the body of the guitar. So before I glued more layers in, I decided to try to shape them a little bit to the shape of the guitar. That seemed like it would make it a little easier to get the job done. So I first put on some painter's tape over the area and then I took a few layers of veneer and glued them together. And I did alternate the grain direction. Uh, just seemed like that would help make it a little bit stronger. And I glued them together and then taped them down so that as they dried, they would take the shape of the side of the guitar. They would just have that slight curve to them. And it worked pretty well. When they were dry, they had a nice soft curve. And then I took that veneer sandwich that I just glued up and cut that out to the correct shape and glued that into the hole. And it wasn't a perfect fit. There were some gaps around the edge. So I just filled those with some wood filler. And again, the new finish was going to be opaque. So it didn't matter what color the grain filler was or even the patch because no one was gonna see it. At this point, I decided to spray on some white primer. The primer would help me to see imperfections in the wood. Without the primer, the surface of the wood was just too inconsistent with all the different colors going on to be able to see imperfections in it. So making it all a nice uniform color was going to help a lot. First, I stuffed some plastic bags inside 
so that I didn't get any overspray into the guitar. And then I hung it up by a piece of plastic pipe that I screwed into the neck pocket. And then I could apply a coat of primer. The primer I'm using is this white shellac based primer. Once the primer dried, then I brought it back into the garage. And with it all a nice consistent color, then I could see all of the imperfections that I needed to address. And a lot of it was just open wood grain that I would have to fill before I put the final finish on so that I'd have a nice smooth finish. And to fill in that wood grain, I used a wood filler, but before I applied the wood filler, I did drill a new hole for the output jack. And for this, I just used a Forstner bit to make the hole. And later on, when I assemble the guitar, I'll be using a jack plate that will cover the hole. And then I could apply the filler. And I used a water-based filler and I added some more water to it until it was the consistency that I was looking for and then spread it over the guitar. And once it dried, I sanded off any excess filler while leaving the filler that's down in the pores. I wanted those pores filled so I would have a nice smooth surface. And I also ended up sanding off most of the white primer when I did this. And so now the wood grain was filled with either the old black paint, the wood filler, or some white primer. This is the lacquer that I would be using for the color coat. And I also used their primer I spray the primer on first, and then following the directions on the can, I sanded it down lightly with some 800 grit paper. And then I could apply the color coats. And I just followed the directions on the can and Tried not to apply it too heavy, just a bunch of light coats until I got the build that I was looking for. And after it dried for about an hour, I began scraping the paint off of the binding. And I ran into some difficulty here. I was having a hard time getting a clean line between the paint and the binding. It seemed like maybe there was too much paint on the binding. It was also difficult because the binding was not a consistent thickness. The thickness changed all along the binding, so once I found the edge of the binding in one spot, it may not be the same a few inches down and in a few spots I ended up going past the binding and into the wood. And the paint was so thick on there with the primer and the color that I couldn't see through the paint to see where the binding ended. So this wasn't going to work and I decided to start over again and I removed all the paint and the primer. And this time, instead of scraping it off, I used a paint stripper. 
I was a little nervous about using this because I was afraid it might melt the plastic binding. And it didn't melt it, although it did seem to maybe soften it a little bit, but it hardened back up quickly. And it almost seemed to have a positive effect on it. It seemed to clean off the binding a little bit, and it seemed smoother afterwards. And the paint, since it was fresh, lacquer, it came right off really easily, although it was messy, which is another reason that I avoid using the stripper sometimes. Uh, in addition to the possibility of it damaging the binding, it also just makes a mess. But in this case, it seemed like the best option. And once that was all cleaned off, I sprayed on a new coat of primer, but this time I tried to keep it thinner and most importantly, I scraped the primer off of the binding before I put the color coat on, so I'd have less paint to scrape through. And then I sprayed the color on again and waited about an hour for the paint to dry and then scraped the binding again. And this time it was a lot easier and I was able to get a nice clean line. And for most of it, I just used a utility knife blade. And next, I could apply the clear coat, which is a clear lacquer. And all of the internet luthiers out there, I'm sure will be happy to see that I'm using a lacquer made specifically for musical instruments. And it looks like it's pretty good stuff. Uh, I'm just reading the back of the can here. And it says it's suitable for R&B, grunge, uh, EDM post-punk, post-hardcore, uh, trip-hop, hmm, ska, adult contemporary, and classic rock. Not suitable for contemporary Christian or bro country. I'm not even sure what bro country is, but I'm sure I won't be playing it anyway, so this should work. I was really happy with how the clear lacquer went on, especially in the less than ideal conditions I was spraying in, outside with little wind, no spray booth, but it laid down really smoothly. So once I had enough coats on there, I just hung it up to dry. And after I let it dry for a while, I'm going to buff it out but that's for the next installment. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching.